Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations, and in this tutorial I want to show you guys how I'm going to be wrapping this dichroic fused glass cab from our shop on backtoearthcreations.com, and it's one of our groovy cabs. All of the suitable cabs on our website have an option where um, you can select for us to engrave this groove around the edges if my camera will focus. And uh, I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to wire wrap with these. And while I've done tutorials and like shorts and stuff of some of these other designs, I wanted to show you guys a little bit fancier other wrap where we also utilize adding in some like beads and getting a much more sort of like Oxana crafts looking like that kind of more sleek and minimal like but so pretty um, <laughs> uh, wire wrap style. So let's get to experimenting. So we're going to come through here and I have, this is about 20 inches of 20 gauge vintage bronze. Just, you can use whatever color that you like. Um, but I'm also going to be using about, oh, if I could pick it up, like not eight or nine inches of 18 gauge half round. And this is in antique copper, but I just really like those two color tones together. So again, you can use whatever color tone you like. And I'm just going to come through here and bring this around our stone. And I'm just nestling the wire into that groove. I really like the 20 gauge because it fills up the groove without like spilling over too much. But it's like very, very sleek and stable. Um, whereas normally I'd come through and cross the wires right up at the top. For this one, I actually wanted to do a little bit of, like, give it a, a touch of space there. Because so long as we have it stabilized, and I'm just pinching in with my fingernails, you could use your pliers if you like. But so long as we have it stabilized, there's not going to be too much wiggle. Like, you can push it up a little bit, but as we tighten things up, um, we shouldn't have to worry about that. So... And there you can see it just popped right out. But we'll set the stone down for now because and we can, we don't like need the stone in there right this second. I'm just going to come in with our pliers and where we kind of dented with our fingernails, I'm going to bend it just a little bit more to give it a bit of a, hopefully, a perfect teardrop shape. And now we'll put the stone back in. And you can really be discerning about which side you want towards the top. Ooh, I like that one because some of these dichros and a lot of the like the labradorites and stuff that we carry in our shop um have like a best fit a, a good side <laughs> so to speak like um that they they are prettiest like the flash is most shown off from that direction so now we're gonna take our half round wire you can always sort of tell that's the round side and that's if I can get it to flash that's the flat side so if you aren't quite able to tell with your fingertips um, which is round and which is flat, you may be able to tell with the way that it interacts with the light. And I'm just coming through and doing a couple of wraps to get the wires to sit nice and snug side by side the way we want them. And now I'm going to come in and wrap with the tail of the wire. And I'm going to smush this a little bit. I prefer to wrap a little, smush a little, wrap a little, smush a little. Um, because that way, I, if I'm not doing something correct with my tension and things are coming out a little weird, uh, we have time to address that. So I'm actually going to hold our, our wires with my pliers as I come through. And I want them side by side, not on top of each other. So it can be a little tricky, but you've got this. Just be patient with yourself. Be patient with the piece. And keep on wrapping. This can also be accomplished with if you don't have half round wire, but you want a similar effect. Uh, you could just wrap this with some 24, 26, or even 28 gauge wire. The larger the number with gauge, the thinner the wire is. So typically the thickest wire that I wrap with is like a 16 gauge and the thinnest I use is a 28 gauge to just demonstrate that a little bit more. And I wrapped a few and I'm going to smoosh. And what I'm doing here is I'm not grabbing the core wires. I'm just using my pliers braced and narrow enough that it's touching on both sides, the coiling that we've done. And that way it kind of compresses it all. 
I'm just coming through here and we're gonna wrap until we have about maybe an inch and I start from where I last smushed that way I don't get any unintentional twists in our wire smush and compress now if you're just starting out you may want to try like if you're having a lot of problems with your center wires like your core wires you may want to go ahead and try an 18 gauge because those can be a little bit more structurally like stoic I don't know like solid like they don't uh, bend and wiggle as much but I personally really love the look of the 20 gauge and in the past, I was always afraid to use a 20 gauge on a cabochon that wasn't grooved because it just seemed kind of delicate and like it might have been pretty easy to bend and pop the stone out. But now that we've got these grooves on there, I'm a lot less timid about using thinner wires to get a more delicate look because while it looks delicate, it's a little bit like that ballerina concept. They look very petite and delicate, but they are like strong. <laughs> So that's what I'm going for with this. Okay, and again, we've got that little bit of wiggle, but if we come in here and just using our fingers so that we get a gentle sloping, I'm just pinching that little bit. And I mean, I feel a minute bit of wiggle, but we're not done yet. I'm gonna grab right here and bend towards the back very slightly. And then you could use a pen or a knitting needle or like mandrel pliers or something. And I'm just going to come through right here and pinching just with my fingernails, making our bail like a little teardrop like that. Removing the mandrel. I'm actually going to open it up a bit more and I'm just using my finger to bend this around so that we can now thread this through towards the middle. And really at this point, everything we're doing is just decorative. Um, so it's kind of structural, uh, like we need to do a little bit of stabilizing to keep that from wiggling around so much, but um, I'm just demonstrating a concept. The fine details will really come to life in your piece. So don't feel like you have to do exactly the same decoration as me as we move forward on this piece. So. We've wrapped around from the front to the back, and I'm just going to do another stabilization. Like, whoop, getting my fingernail in there and just cinching that down. And I'm going to do that on both sides, and this really stabilizes our bail. Now, the next step. The reason I'm using a 20 gauge wire is because that's kind of the thickest I can fit through this bead that I'm using, which is a, a six millimeter opalite. But just some, if you're gonna incorporate beads, you will wanna make sure that, well, that they actually fit onto the wire that you're using. So I threaded it on there and I kind of want the bead to fill in that void up there at the top. So I'm gonna take this wire here and I'm wrapping it towards the front because I'm going to use it to kind of frame our bead. And then the wire that's coming out of the bead, if you can see I'm kind of pressing right there with my fingernail. I'm going to have it join on the second rotation around and this makes a little bit of a rosette. And then from here, this is where I'm going to do the wrap around the shoulders, so to speak. Like if this is the head and this is the body and this was the neck, we just did like a really pretty bobble there. And now it's just going to have one little wrap like that. And then I'm going to do a second wrap down below it. And then from here, I'm going to do a little bit of a bend up. And at this point, I am going to work with just one wire and then the other. So I'm going to take this wire and feed it through in the bale. Just cinching. And then I'm going to take our other wire and feed it through in the bale. And pull down. And cinch. 
and then we'll check from the front and see how everything's looking. I kind of think this looks a little bit like a potion bottle or something. Like, I think a lot of really cool effects could be done with this with different shaped stones as well. And so from here, um, oh, we could totally do some spirals up the bale, like how we did here on this piece. If you wanted, you can see there's a lot of similarities. This piece here is a little bit of a hybrid between um, these three styles, or really these two styles. Because we have the shoulder wrap like this one, and we have a little bit of this, but we have a bead in there. So again, entirely your own personal preference on if you want to incorporate spirals up the bale. But for the sake of being kind of sleek and minimal, which is uh, pretty pretty challenging for me, so the stuff that doesn't come naturally to me is what I like to practice the most to try to get a little better at it. So now I'm just coming in and taking those snipped ends and pulling them and smushing them. I'm going to take this end and whoops, pull and smush. I really love my bent nose pliers for this because it really just lets you get in there. And now I'm going to snip, I'm going to lift these out just a little and I'm gonna get in there and snip oh, sorry I cover it with my thumb because if you snip with it facing towards you it's gonna shoot you like it's gonna ping that into your face and that's no good so <laughs> either snip away from yourself or cover it up um, but by snipping right there you would actually have to like if you wore this over like um, a fine knit sweater or something like just anything that might be snagging there's nothing on the back to snag. The only two ends are right there on the inside of the bale, which is typically very rare for fabric to get in there or hair to get in there and get tangled, like if you have long hair or something. So, whoops, <laughs> super durable. So that is how that wrap comes out. I really love this design as well for if you have clear stones, like, um, you know, uh, just something that is maybe a translucent amethyst or something like that it, because you don't have any wires crossing in the back and it's also a great option for if you have dual sided stones um, you could wrap it in a way that is pretty from both sides so if you guys have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down below I love to hear from you guys and I do try my best to get back uh, to everybody who comments um, if you have any requests for future tutorials, uh, that would be amazing too, because I, y'all have so many good ideas and, uh, I love kind of the challenges and stuff that y'all come up with. Um, again, if you like this style of stone and you would like to get your hands on some, please stop by our website, backtoearthcreations.com. Um, we have them for sale under our craft along materials and then like cabochons all, and then we also have like where it breaks it down by gemstone or fused glass or dichro or resin. Um, if you enjoy our channel and would like to support the creation of more free tutorials, uh, please consider joining our Craft Along Club. For as little as a dollar a month or $12 a year, uh, you can get access to our Saturday exclusive streams, all sorts of behind the scenes content, exclusive coupons, um, just, just a mess of stuff. And the more you pledge, the more you get. We actually send out monthly Craft Along kits as well. That way you can get cabs, uh, mailed to you monthly as well as Parawire. So you can actually be using all the same stuff that we use here in our tutorials. So thank you guys again so much for watching. I do hope that this was helpful to you. And until next time, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>